Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello and welcome to Growing Hope, where we are investing just a few moments to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. I am Katherine Lang and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because I'm just stubborn enough to keep looking even no matter what the weather may be, no matter how dark the clouds may be, I'm going to keep looking for that rainbow. I'm going to keep searching for that possibility because I know it's there. I know that where wherever I am, whatever is going on, there is a possibility. There is a potential. There is a positive amongst whatever it is that's going on. But it's not always easy. It's always there. It's just not always easy. And last week was one of those weeks for me because I received one of those reviews. As a writer and an author, I expect negative comments. As a content creator for other individuals, I expect to have to adjust my voice or adjust the words to meet their needs. But this was one of those particular reviews that makes you just kind of go, ugh, because it didn't really give me anything to go on. He said it was a waste of time. It was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous and non-existent plot. There were childish character development, an inane dialogue, bland and boring are probably the closest words to a compliment I can give. Now, it was not the worst thing that's ever been said to me, but it definitely wasn't the most positive thing that I've received. And I was just in one of those moods where a little negative went a long way for me. I had no interest in doing anything. (laughs) And I felt like I was justified in not doing because I had been hurt. I had been mortally wounded. (laughs) I had been condemned and my writing was horrible. But here's the thing. I enjoy what I write. I like the characters that I write. I love the dialogue that I write because I hear it around me all the time. But I get that not everyone likes what I write. Not everyone likes the genre that I like. I had a really good friend review one of my books and I got only only a three-star review from a friend that loved the book but doesn't like the genre. I get it. Not everyone's going to like what I'm doing. But if I let what other people say become my driving force, then I won't ever get anything done. There's always going to be somebody that says something negative. And the problem is that if I want to reach for my success and I want to touch the border of that whiteboard of world domination, big dream goal that's right over there on my closet doors, then I have to make it work. I have to get off my butts and I have to move in the direction that takes me to action. If I want to get there, then I have to get going. So over the next few times together, we're going to be talking about the power of inertia. One, we have to do something. Two, we have to do it now. Three, there's no more shortcuts. Four, nobody else can do it or will do it. And five, we have to do one more thing. I want to be more and I want to do more than what I see around me right now. But it won't happen if I sit around on my butts. (laughs) I have to quit making excuses and I have to start stepping out. I have to harness that power of inertia. So today we're going to be talking about how to do something. Do something, something, anything. Just get going. So I'm going to, one, I'm going to start with a little. Two, I'm going to add to that little. Three, I'm going to understand that action always begets action. 
four, I'm going to recognize that the little bits will add up. And five, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to despair because there are going to be those days. No matter how focused and determined I am, there are going to be those days. Over the month of October, I really worked through where I was going and what I was doing. And I created this awesome, have you lost your mind plan of what I was going to do. And on day one, I recognized that, yes, I absolutely had lost my mind. (laughs) There just weren't enough hours in the day to do everything that I had put in this awesome challenge. But I got so much accomplished pursuing this challenge. It wasn't what I had expected. It wasn't even what I wanted. But I got so much done because I got up and started doing. That is what doing something will do. When I do one thing, then it leads me to do another thing that leads me to do another thing. And then all of a sudden I've gotten so much more done than I ever imagined possible. Maybe I didn't get everything done. Maybe I didn't even get everything done that I could have gotten done. But by doing something, I got more done than if I had done nothing. Nothing will get me just that. Whatever you multiply by zero always comes out as zero because When I do nothing, no matter how big my dreams, no matter how determined I think I may be, if I'm not doing something, then I'm not going anywhere. It always takes that first step. It always requires me moving towards my unique design and my unique purpose. I have to make the choice. It's always up to me to make the move. But the only way I'm ever going to reach my desired destination is if I make that move. I have to step up. I have to step out. And I have to keep going until I am where I want to be. I'm not there yet. That means I have to do something that's going to move me to where I want to be. I'm going to have to start. I can start with a little And it'll add up, but I have to harness that power of inertia, harness that power of doing in order to get to where I want to be in this journey. It's not about the quantity. It's not even about the quality. It is just about doing something. (laughs) It's just about getting going in the right direction. Growing Hope needs to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'm going to share some more thoughts on how to just do something so I can get moving to where I want to be. Growing Hope will be right back. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be. With many affordable services, including radio and webinar hosting and an outstanding review crew, You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week I'll share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, or movies, and I'll tell you why it moves me to share. Although I know we each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we're moved by words, then others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is on the Alpha Course. It's a 14-week course that carries you through the basics of faith and life. Our church went through it a few years ago, and I found another class that I thought I should be taking. I mean, after all, I had a foundation of faith, and I had a knowledge of the Scripture, so I had no need for the basic guide. But the next year, the church held just the Alpha course. That means there were no other options for me to take. I either attended the Alpha course or I got to attend nothing at all. Now, I am always content to study on my own, but I decided to walk through the Alpha course with my church. And what an amazing walk that was for me. The lessons were insightful. The leader on the video kept me smiling and laughing and learning all the way through. But the most powerful part of the course for me was the small groups. I connected with people in my church that I had never even met before, and we connected in a profound way. I also connected with my own faith in a way that cut deep to the core of who I am 
and who I'm growing up to be. I was challenged to push beyond my ordinary and to dare to take a step towards the extraordinary. Now you can learn more about the Alpha course at alpha.org. That's A-L-P-H-A dot O-R-G. I highly recommend the course for you, no matter where you are in your walk and for your church. This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution. Travel along with Cal Press and Spencer as they search the Alabama Gulf Coast, Gulf Shores, and Fort Morgan to Dolphin Island for games for a treasure hidden away by centuries. You dare uncover the secrets held by Mystery Rock? Come along in Catherine C. Lang's new middle school tourism fictional novel series, Scouting Out Adventure. Get the first book, Mystery Rock, in paperback and ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Welcome back to today's Growing Hope, where we are investing just a few moments to kick the butts by taming the power of inertia. I am Catherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host, because I know that if I start looking for those possibilities, then I will keep moving towards that positive, because that's how it works. When I move, then I keep moving The law of inertia demands that when I move, I keep moving. If I want to become all that I want to be, then I'm not going to get there sitting around waiting for someone to knock on my door and ask me if I want to do it. I have to be actively pursuing what it is that I desire in my life. And I've been spending some time really getting honest and serious about what it is that I want. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I was challenged to go over my wants, write them down, make a list. And so I did. Every time I thought to myself, I want, I wrote it down on a list. By the end of the two weeks, I had a pretty substantial little list going. (laughs) So I knew I needed to take some time and think over all of these wants and really look at not only the wants, but what I was willing to do to reach those wants. So yesterday I sat down and I looked at these wants and I realized that I had two that were the top two. These are absolute must. These have been on my heart and my mind and they're not going away. But then as I looked at the others, I recognized that if I would get into position for these first two, then the others would line up as well. And and it just kind of shocked me that all of my wants fell around these two main ideas. So I determined what it would take for me to reach these two wants. And I know that it starts with a little. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little. I'm going to start with a little bit. For instance, if I want to get back to a position where I can run like I did in high school, then I'm not going to do it by going out today and running (laughs) because I won't be able to run tomorrow. So I am walking. I am walking 5,000 uh, 5, steps a day, which comes out to about two to three miles um, because my steps, I, I never make it just five. I've, I've created a lap around my yard. Yes, I have a big yard. And two laps equals around 7,000 steps for me. So that's what I've been doing. I'll keep adding to that as I speed up on my two laps and I get my two laps under 40 minutes, then I will begin to increase to three laps because I want to keep it within a certain time limit. But I'm going to start with a little and then I'm going to take the second step, which is to add to it. Once I master the little, then I add to that. This works in social media as well because so often we get caught up in trying to do everything on social media. And literally, it seems to me that there's a social media page that's added every single week. Or every single day, or sometimes every single minute, there's always something new. But if I master the first, and then I begin to add to it, it doesn't become so overwhelming. The third thing I'm going to recognize is that action begets action. Once I start doing something, then it's easier for me to keep doing it. Nothing is more difficult than dishes in the sink, because all I can do is think about 
I need to do the dishes in the sink, but I don't want to do the dishes in the sink. But I need to do the dishes in the sink, but I don't want to do the dishes in the sink. But I need to do the dishes. <laughs> and when I finally make myself get up and do the dishes in the sink, it only takes a few minutes and then I'm already up. So I do something else. Maybe I clean the kitchen or maybe I go sort through the files that n- needed to be put away. But the idea is that action begets action. So once I take that step, then I am in a position to take that next step. The fourth thing is to recognize that the little bits add up. It may not seem like a lot to declutter a single drawer, but if I declutter a single drawer or a single space every single day, then by the end of the month, I will be amazed at how much of my home is now decluttered. If I go out and I weed in the garden for an hour or I weed for 10 feet, then by the end of the season, my whole garden is ready for the next step. If I write every single day for 20 minutes and I only write 500 words every single day for 20 minutes, by the end of the month, I'm up to 15,000 words, right? Math on the fly is not a good idea some mornings. (laughs) But if I write a thousand, I can do that. If I write a thousand words a day for 30 days, then I am to 30,000 words in just a month. Just from sitting down for a few minutes and writing. Little bits add up. And the fifth thing is don't despair. I mean, the days are going to happen. The other day... You know, I got up and I got going. I got my morning routine done. But then the water board called and told me that our water meter was just spinning. Which is never a good thing. Ever. Just for the record. So we had to turn off our water. Which means that I had to go around filling up all the different everything that I could think of to fill up. So that while the water was off, because I didn't know how long it was going to be off, we could still kind of function in the house. But not having water will throw your day off just a little bit. And I could have fretted over that. I could have, you know, reprimanded myself for not getting done what I had planned on getting done. For not getting the words written or not finishing or completing my, you know, November Have You Lost Your Mind challenge. But things are going to happen. And I accept that. And actually, in being consistent in what I'm doing... I'm prepared for things to happen. The only thing I need to avoid is letting the things happening become the normal as opposed to the unexpected occasional. As long as I get back on track, then I don't need to worry about how I messed up before. Things are going to happen. But as long as I'm doing something, as long as I am focused on taking that next step, as long as I am getting up and getting going, then I'm going to harness that power of inertia and I'm going to begin moving towards the success that I so desire for my life. It takes action, but it takes my action to begin to move me to that success that I desire in that place that I want for my life. Doing something is not about waiting. It's not about uh, other people. It's about me. It's about me getting up and me getting going. If I want to create a place of possibility for my journey, then I'm going to have to make those choices. Growing Hope needs to take one more break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking foundational ideas for the power of inertia. I have a secret. Actually, I have eight secrets, and I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm Katherine Lang, and I am the Husband Whisperer. I've learned the secrets for having the perfect spouse. The Husband Whisperer by Katherine C. Lang. Available at most online bookstores, or you can purchase your copy by visiting www.katherinelang.com slash books. And now it's time for Back Porch Chats, where I share the little snippets of wisdom I gain from chatting with friends and family on the back porch and around the globe. Welcome, John Michael Morgan. When, let's say, for example, um, 
you know, a lot of churches I've talked to, you know, they've got these different plans that they want to do, these different ideas, and they're really good ideas. And then I start walking them through, okay, here's how you could do that, and here's what it would look like. But then they get into that, but that's not how we've always done it. Yep. We've like, never oh. done it that way before. Yeah, 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 which is, you know, just, you know, the worst thing that anyone could ever say or think is, you know, that whole thing. And sometimes I've had to say, well, listen, if it was so good the way you've done it, then why are you trying to change? Yep. You know, why have a new idea, right? And, and so that's the thing is it's like, okay, we've got to, you know, grow and adapt. And that is all exciting to me. But then, um, like I said, you know, then the challenge is coming in and helping someone get outside of that. Mason Hawks of the United Earth Central Corps. I've encountered an unidentified spacecraft that has refused to answer all attempts to communicate. It has reacted in a hostile manner and launched several combat fighters to engage me. My ship is damaged and I'm not going to make it, so I've done a memory scan and embedded it in this transmission. Please. I'm not sure how I got here or even where here is. Can you boost the signal? I woke up in the wreckage of a crashed shuttle. Is anyone receiving this? Can anyone out there hear me? The melee satellite has been destroyed. My signal's too weak. If you can hear this, you've got to warn Earth. We are being invaded. There's no hope of warning Earth in time. The aliens that shot down my shuttlecraft plan to take over UCC territory. Please remain at the station. I'm stranded on this primitive backwater planet and trapped in some kind of experimental biosuit. We are being attacked by some There's sort of... too many of them. ...sort of shape-changing alien beings. If you are receiving this... Please, relay the warning to Earth. Stars of the Connery by S.P. Dorning. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble today. Audio produced by Spiritblade.net. Christian sci-fi and fantasy. Unsterilized, unsafe, unleashed. Welcome back to this final segment of today's Growing Hope, where we are harnessing that power of inertia and learning how to do what needs to be done to get off my butts (laughs) and into the place where I'm getting done what I want to get done. I am Catherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host. Everybody needs somebody around them that's going to encourage them to get up and get going, and sometimes... That happens to me from people around me, but so often just sitting down and sharing with you <laughs> is the reason that, that I get motivated and I get encouraged. There is just something about encouraging other people that ignites the encouragement in the heart of the one giving that encouragement. That's the awesome thing about encouragement. It multiplies. It not only multiplies by the people that I encounter, but it multiplies in my own life and in my own heart. I think that that's why it's so important that we practice action because action works the same way. Action begets action. When I get up and I get going and I do stuff, the people around me get up and get going and start doing stuff. But if I sit down even to write and I ask other people to get up and get going and get and do what needs to be done, they don't want to do anything because I'm not doing anything or it looks to them like I'm not doing anything. Or even if they know I'm in here working, I'm not doing something that ignites them to do stuff. When I take action, I begin to shift to a place where not only do I do more actions, but I drive actions in the lives of the people around me. Now, the scripture is full of people taking action. And people encouraging others to take action. James is all about the action. I mean, he is big on faith, but he also comes around and says that that faith without works is nothing. Um, in James one twenty two, he's saying to be hearers and doers. In other words, listen to what you're being taught, but then put it to action. It, it doesn't do us any good if we just keep learning. And that works in every aspect of our lives, we have to put it to action. It can't be just about more learning. James goes on in 122 through 25 to say, show your faith, show what you believe by what you do. Your, your words matter, but your actions 
are even more powerful than your words. Um, I heard once that you should preach the gospel every single day and use your words when you absolutely have to. In other words, what I am doing speaks volumes. Jesus said in eleven in Luke eleven nine that we are to ask and seek and to knock. We are all every one of those are action words. We're supposed to be actively pursuing God and God's will for our lives, but we're supposed to be actively involved in sharing what we know and where we're going. This morning I read in Psalm thirty four that those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those that seek, those that take an action, those that pursue an understanding and a relationship with God shall not lack any good thing. That is an, an, a promise, a powerful promise that I'm going to hold tight to today. But then in, in Matthew 20, 30 through 34, Two blind men are there. That they hear that Jesus is walking by and they start crying out to Jesus. And everybody reprimands them. They tell him, no, stop, stop, don't bother him. But they just keep crying out. And Jesus calls them over there and says, what, what do you want? And they say, we want to be healed. And he says, okay, you're healed. Because they were persistent in, in doing what they could do. They received what it was that they wanted, but they had to take the action to call out. And then they had to take the action to go to him. In uh, Matthew, Jesus is also explaining about the two sons. There was one that said no, but went and did what he was asked to do. And then there was one that said yes, but that he didn't do what he said he was going to do. And Jesus says, which do you think was favored by their father? And it's the one who did because actions speak louder than words. I have to take the action to step out and do what it is that God wants me to do. Uh, John Michael Morgan said, if it's so good the way you've been doing it, then why do you want to change? Look, I have a blessed life, but I know that God has called me to so much more. I also know that it's not going to happen to me. Or happen for me. It's going to happen with me. I'm going to have to get up and take action. Thank you so much for joining me today. On this episode of Growing Hope. As we are kicking the butts. And taking control of our journey. By harnessing that power of inertia. We are doing something that moves us closer to where we want to be. I know that in stepping up and encouraging you. I am one step closer To where I know I'm supposed to be going. I want to hear where you're going. And how this is working for you. Please email me at radio at katherinelang.com. You can share your thoughts or your questions or your comments. And together we can begin moving this. Moving towards this process of powerful living. By harnessing the power of inertia. And doing what we know we need to be doing. I am Katherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host, because every day holds the power of possibility, and every action contains the hope that we need to keep going. It's not about what the world says, or even what the world shows. The strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the walls of this world. My prayer is, and always will be, that the words I share are helping establish a foundation of hope that will shatter the delusions of the world around us. Remember, in all that you're doing, be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Katherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Katherine's website at www.katherinelang.com. That's www. K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-L-A-N-G dot com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at katherinelang dot com. If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com reflections. 
And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.